The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said, and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord, May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Very early on in the history of Christianity, the followers of Jesus reflected that if Mary was the mother of Jesus, and if Jesus is God incarnate, then Mary must be the mother of God. And that became one of her great titles, saying something both about Mary and about Jesus. And of course, what is the whole meaning that is behind all of this? It is, as our first reading from the book of Genesis says, that we human beings have pretty much made a mess of things. Uh, we seem to continue to do that, don't we? And nevertheless, God's love for us has not in any way waned. God created us out of love to share in God's wonderful gifts for all eternity, here in this world and forever. But we have sinned. And so God does not cease loving us, but rather chose to then come and save us. By becoming one of us, God became one of us in the second person of the Blessed Trinity, the Word of God becoming flesh. And as Christians reflected upon this more, they said, well, if God came into our world in a, as a human being, then that woman who conceived him and bore him and brought him into this world could hardly be touched by the same sin that touches all the rest of us. And so we celebrate that Mary was conceived without sin, that she was saved from her sinfulness already before her son even came into the world and saved us. And that is expressed in our prayers today for this feast. So in the opening prayer, we said, we praised God who preserved Mary from every stain by virtue of the death of your son, which you foresaw. So Mary was preserved from sin by the effects of her son's dying and rising, but even before it happened. And as we get ready for the prayer over the offerings, you're going to hear a way in which that has been expressed down the ages. And as you hear this phrase, you're going to say, what? So let me mention it now. Uh, on this solemnity of the Immaculate Virgin, Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we profess her on account of your prevenient grace, so the grace of God acting on her behalf before the Lord had even suffered and died and rose from the dead on our behalf, and therefore by that prevenient grace 
Mary is untouched by any stain of sin. So we celebrate this wonderful woman who, as we hear in the gospel today, gave herself totally to God's will, whatever God wanted of her. And because of that, as St. Paul says in the letter to the Ephesians, we also now are God's adopted children.